Hi there, I'm Jessica Rose from the London Jewellery School and today I'm going to show you how to make some jewellery. Hi there and welcome. Um, today I'm going to be showing you how to make some lovely rose jewellery uh, just using some wire. So we've got these gorgeous silver stud earrings and we often get asked how do you make studs um, because there's lots of tutorials for beaded dangly drop earrings but studs are obviously lovely to wear and these wire studs are beautifully easy to make um, and I'm also going to show you how to make a really simple rose ring like you can see in this gold piece that I have here um, and it's exactly almost exactly the same technique for both um, and once you've got started with it, you can experiment with all different things. So, without further ado, we'll get started. Um, what you're going to need for this project is a mandrel, which is this wooden piece here. Um, you can get steel ones or wooden ones, and it's basically just a cone shape. So, um, if you don't have one of these, um, they're not difficult to get hold of, but you could also just use anything that has a kind of similar shape, maybe a Pritt stick or something like that. Um, we're going to be using our pliers, so I've got some chain nose pliers here, I've got my side cutters here for cutting the wire, some round nose pliers over here, and also I have a little needle file which is essential for making the ends of my stud earrings nice and smooth and neat. And then finally I have my wire. Um, so I'm using, this is silver wire, you could use silver plated, um, gold plated, gold filled, any wire you like really. Um, and this is 22 gauge, which is about 0.6 millimetres. So I'll just clear my space and we can get started. So to begin with, I'm just going to cut off a piece of wire. I normally take around 40 centimetres. So I'm just going to use my cutters and snip that off. Then I'm going to take my mandrel, um, go towards the thicker end um, of the, the stick, so it's quite a thin stick, and place my wire right in the middle. And I'm just going to wrap it round once and then take one wire down and one wire up so that I've got them in the different directions and then I'm just going to twist both in the opposite direction so I just twist it round and sometimes I move my stick and sometimes I move my wire whatever's most comfortable don't worry too much about getting it super neat because this is going to be a rose which is a nice natural shape so I'm just twisting round as I go and I don't want to pull too tightly on these um, because I want to create a nice kind of rose shape and if I pull it really really tight the wires might tuck underneath each other um, so it's okay to have a little bit of that but I'm just being a little bit loose with my wrapping to allow a bit of room for it to breathe and then depending on how large you want your studs to be, once I've got a nice kind of solid base amount, I'm going to start the second part, which is where I bring the two wires together. So you can see they're both down one side. And I'm just going to twist them to each other just a couple of times. So you can see I've got a little twist down the side and then with that twisted wire I'm just going to wrap that around and then I'll twist a little bit more just do a couple of twists at a time and then wrap that under two so I'm really just adding that twisted wire around the edge and you can keep going with this as much as you like until you're happy with the overall design of the front of your stud. And then once you're done, you can take the piece off the mandrel. And if we look at the back, you can see that I've got my two wires coming out the end. And I'm just going to give them a final twist together. And 
and cut them off with my cutters because we don't need those bits. And then I'm just going to take my chain nose pliers, grab the end bits and just tuck those in. Okay, great. So there we have our ring. <laughs> and you may be thinking, well, that's lovely, but it's not a stud earring and you are correct. Now, if you were just wanting to make a ring, then you would be done here. Um, the only thing I would say about these as rings, they do work um, just as they are and they look very pretty, but they're quite delicate because the wire that we've used um, is quite a thin wire. So what you could do to make it a little bit more robust is take another long length of wire and just wrap it around the base, um, start at one side and go all the way around. Uh, and that will just make it a little more robust. Um, but using this ring shape, we are gonna make a stud. So I'll show you how to do that. And it's very, very simple. And just take my side cutters and cut the ring on one side. Then I've got a long side and a short side. I'm going to straighten the long side with my fingers or you can use some pliers for that. I'm not gonna to worry too much about it. And then the shorter side, I'm gonna take my pliers or again, you can use your fingers and just wrap it around the base of the long wire just to secure everything in place. And we're just going to snip that off. Remember when you're cutting always to cover the edge so it doesn't fly, fly off into your room. And I'm just tucking the end of that in there. So what I'm left with is just one long piece coming out of the end of my rose. And I'm going to make this the back of my stud. So I'm going to take just over a centimetre and cut it with my cutters. Then I just use my pliers to straighten that. Now to make the end of this really nice and straight and also nice and sharp, I'm going to hold it the end with my pliers and I'm just going to twist. So I'm holding the other end with my hand. I'm just going to twist the wire around a few times. And the reason why I do this is that when you work with metal in this way, when you twist it, when you hammer it, when you do anything like that to metal, it does something called work hardening it. And I don't know if you can see, but it's basically a little bit firmer. It's a little bit more springy and it also straightens it. So it's perfect for this kind of stud back where you want it quite nice and secure. So, that's a little bit too long for me so I'm just going to cut a teeny bit down then obviously I want to turn my attention towards the end of the piece because it's a little bit sharp and this is where the handy needle file comes in so I'm just going to hold the end with my fingers and just very gently file down the end you could also use if you have an ending burr that's another way to, if you're doing lots of um, ear wires, it's a quite neat way to do it, but a needle file will work perfectly. And I just rub my finger across it and keep going until it feels kind of like a smooth point. You can't really have a smooth point, can you? But <laughs> I think you know what I mean, the end of an ear wire, so there's no jaggedy bits, um, but it's just comfortable to go in your ear. And this wire size is the perfect size for that. Now the finishing touch to my stud is that I want to make a tiny little ridge at the end because I'm going to be using butterfly clips to hold these in place on the ear. So I'm just taking my side cutters, placing my wire in them with a teeny tiny bit sticking out the other end. And then what I want to do is just, I'm holding down very gently, so I don't want to cut the piece. That's quite crucial at this point. We don't want to cut the piece. I just want to make a little score mark. So I'm just going to twist the wire around once or twice and take it off. And I don't know if you can see, but there's a teeny tiny little mark there, which will just help to give some friction when I apply any butterfly loops to the back. 
And that's it, that's your stud earring. And you can see the ones I've made earlier. So you just repeat exactly the same process and you can make as many as you like. Um, and of course you can also make the rings. I think they look gorgeous in silver, but they're also stunning in gold. Um, if you do other jewelry making, you know other techniques, you could pattern them to make them go kind of like a black color um, and make your whole collection of rose jewelry. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. As usual, all the tools and materials needed are provided in the links below. And if you enjoyed and would like to learn more, then hop on over to our site, which is jewelryschoolonline.com for professional online jewelry courses that can help you develop skills to become a jeweler or to make for fun at home as a hobby. All of our courses are based on the site and we look forward to meeting you over there soon.